Hi y'all. This is Daily Mail episode 28. I'm Cheryl and welcome to Spirit Mail. Today we're going to talk about boundaries and we're going to touch a little bit on forgiveness. Um, whenever you all you all know that my daughter was molested by my brother-in-law. She was 10 years old when this took place and um, he denied it for quite a while after after the initial um, I'm going to say accusation because until until it was proven or whatever it was it was her word against his so basically it was an accusation but I trusted her from the beginning when she said it because I think a 10 year old can't make up certain things about that uh, the details and, and what what she talked about there's no way she could have known right Anyway, so my sister and her husband immediately wanted to come over and assure me that he would never do anything like that. And I said, no, they were not uh, welcome to come do that, that I needed to speak with my daughter, speak with my husband, and pray about it. So anyway, time went on. He finally admitted it, and... um. And I had a really hard time with that. But anyway, as time goes on, I'm, I'm just kind of skipping through to the boundaries and forgiveness part. And I may tell the whole story one day if I feel like it benefits you in any way. But it came to a time where, you know, I'll never forget the, uh, the um, gentleman that I brought my daughter to for counseling. He said to me, uh, you know, whenever something like this happens, it's like a grenade goes off, goes off in the family and the family is just totally split apart. He said, don't be surprised or shocked when you find yourself standing alone against your family because your family will want to try to hold the pieces together. And the way that they're going to do that is by uh, by trying to get you to get your daughter to get over it something like that is what he said anyway basically that's exactly what happened my entire family in my eyes sided with him and 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 immediately started talking to me about forgiveness and that I needed to forgive and I needed to forgive now remember I'm brought up in the church. Our whole family goes. We all go to the same church. It's a little country church. I think the the um, attendance was like 75, maybe on a really good Sunday, and we were probably about 20 people. Uh, my family, in my my parents, my siblings, our kids, all that probably made up about 20 of those 75. So it was a very tight knit little community. But the, the first thing that started happening was they were talking to me about forgiveness. And I'll never forget, um, my sister came to me and said, you have to forgive him. Now, we had been talking about this with my mom, my dad, everybody, you know, talking to me about forgiveness and teaching my daughter how to forgive. And my sister finally came to me and she says, you have to forgive. And I said, I have forgiven and uh, she says, no, you haven't. I said, yes, I have. I know that in my heart that I've forgiven, but it doesn't change what he did. And it doesn't change the consequences of what he did. She says, no, she says, because if you would forgiven him, y'all would be, um, or, no, she, she says, that was my mom that was saying that. She says, yeah, are you praying for him? And I was just stopped and dead in my tracks. I was like, no. <laughs> So that night when I went to bed, my prayer was, and I'm not kidding you, just like this, God, if forgiving him means that I'm supposed to pray for him, or if, I've not, if, if I'm not really forgiving him because I've not prayed for him, then just consider him prayed for, okay? And uh, God laughed. But, it, but it's people have different ideas about what forgiveness is based on their own experiences based on what what they've learned and what they understand and what they think the rules are I really had forgiven him and the reason I know that I had forgiven him is because whenever not for not condoned what he did because there's a huge difference but 
whenever somebody would talk about, because I filed charges and, and he was uh, going to be taken into custody or was taken into custody, and people would say things like, ah, he's going to get what he deserves. Then somebody's going to bend him over, and, and that's all very graphic, and I'm sorry for that. But, but whenever they would say something like that, my heart would hurt because... I don't know because I'm not I wasn't at the time educated enough about any of this stuff to to even understand that hurt people hurt people wasn't even clear on any of that uh but I just felt in my spirit whenever they would say that it just hurt my heart and I felt like nobody deserves that kind of treatment not even him so so in my heart, I knew that I had forgiven him, but my sister was determined that I hadn't because I hadn't prayed for him yet. So that night I said, okay, God, if praying for him, if I have to pray for him to be able to prove that I've forgiven him or whatever, then just consider him prayed for because I didn't know what else to say. And like I said, God kind of laughed. But anyway, one of the things that and one of the other things that happened was, and one of the other reasons that she felt like I hadn't forgiven was because I wouldn't uh, go to family gatherings. And because I had dis I told my parents that they needed to stop him from going to family gatherings. Well, I felt like that was fair. My daughter was actually the one victimized, right? And he was the adult. She was 10. He was 26. And this was her family. This was her mama and her papa and her aunts and uncles and cousins. And um, and while it was his too by proxy and he had children and all that other stuff, I just, there was, there was, I couldn't bring her and, and ask her to sit at the table across from this man who had violated her in that way. I wasn't going to do it. So I set a clear boundary. And it did cause my family to kind of pick sides. And I found myself standing alone with my little nuclear family outside of the rest of my family. It's not a boundary I regret setting because it was important. And it's like I told my mom, I said, it, you're, you're all talking about forgiveness and wanting me to forgive so that we can all be together for Easter, right? But if I say to my daughter, who's now 11, um, you have to forgive, we're going over there, is she going to understand about forgiveness or is she going to think to herself in her 11-year-old mind, mom doesn't care that this man did this to me. Mom doesn't care that this happened to me. What is, what is actually going to be the message to my 11-year-old daughter who's been violated? So... Boundaries are healthy, in my opinion. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not any of those things, right? But for me, that boundary was very healthy, and it was something that I needed to do to protect my daughter. Nobody told me I needed to do it. It was instinctive, something that I knew I needed to do. Then you have situations like um, my dad would come over and fuss at me because I needed to forgive. And and again, I had fabulous parents. And, and I know I'm telling you something that makes you probably think, oh my God, your parents were so horrible. No, they did what they thought was right based on their understanding about how things work in the world and all that stuff. And church, you know, you got to forgive, you got to forgive. And, and the fact that I had actually pressed charges, my dad was beside himself because there's a scripture in the Bible that says you do not bring your brother to the court of law. Um, so, uh, so it was like, I, that's got to have some other meaning, right? It's got to. And I'm not going to delve into that, but what happened was I was so disturbed by that. And, and my husband at that time had had enough. And he told my dad, he said, you're not welcome here anymore. He said, I love you. And I know your daughter loves you and your grandkids adore you. He said, but you cannot come in my home and continue to uh, badger my daughter about your daughter about uh, what you think is right in this situation. So 
he set a clear boundary to protect me and our daughter. So th again, these boundaries are important and sometimes you have to set boundaries with people that you love and adore, but it's important for your own mental and emotional health to be able to do that. I had a phone call yesterday from uh, somebody very close to me and she had had a dream that was very disturbing to her. She said that she saw herself licking a spiral of sugar and somebody came by and drew her attention to the fact that this spiral of sugar she was licking, she was licking off of the ankle of a man. And when she looked up and saw the man, she recognized who it was and she felt very sick. She says, Cheryl, what do you think that meant? This is somebody very close to me. What do you think that meant? And I said, I think it means that uh, you have issues with the fact that you feel obligated, bowing down to the feet, right? Obligated to be nice to him, the sugar, the sweetness, to be nice to him and to, and to allow him to um, give you sugar and hug you and all that stuff when deep inside you have issues with, with who he is. Well, that's not true because I love him and I know I know that I love him and I've forgiven him and all this stuff. I said, I understand that and that's good. But here's the question. When he approaches you and he goes to put his arms around you, do you hug him? And she says, yeah, I'm not comfortable with that because he squeezes a little too tight and, you know, this or that. And she said, and I said, I said, that's what I'm talking about. But because of the way we were raised in this part of the country, you know, you're supposed to hug your elders when they reach out to hug you. Uh, you're supposed to be nice to them and to respect them and all that stuff. She says, well, well, what could I possibly do different that wouldn't make him feel like I judge him? I said, when he reaches his arms out, you could grab his hands and lean over and kiss him on the cheek. That's your boundary. You don't have to let him put his arms around you. You can love him and honor him as an elder, even though you don't agree with his lifestyle or what things that he's done. Uh, and and as a, a Christian, somebody who worries about, you know, love your neighbor. Uh, it's like, how do you navigate that? Right? So I said, grab his hands and then reach over and kiss him on the cheek. That's a beautiful greeting. You don't have to let him put his arms around you and squeeze you too tight. You can set those boundaries and still maintain the integrity of, of who you are as a person who loves him anyway. So boundaries are very, very important. Forgiveness is very important because when we don't forgive, what happens is we're allowing that person that we're holding that grudge against or holding that resentment against, we're violating our own boundaries by holding on to that because that energy, I've heard people say this and I think it's just a great example. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison, poison and hoping that the other person dies from it. It's You're violating your own boundaries. We're doing to ourselves what we wish would happen to them. So whenever we hang on to unforgiveness and resentment and anger and all we can think about is revenge, we're doing more harm to ourselves than we're doing for them. We're violating our own boundaries by giving them our power, giving them our attention. So boundaries are super important. Forgiveness is super important too and forgiveness deserves a much longer um um, conversation than just the little mention that I did here. And we're going to do that one day, but for right now, boundaries was very important. And, and in that vein, I want to say this community, this community is very beautiful to me. And I am so grateful for this community and the, and the people who hear the messages that spirit brings across and they, they absorb them right? But there are people who get on this board, on this community board, or this the comment, in the comment sections, and they 
their comments are filled with a whole lot of hate. They'll say, Spirit's guiding me and blah, blah, blah. And in the next breath, they're saying how horrible their devil ex is or blah, blah, all that stuff. And that's horrible energy. So as the uh, boss of this channel, right, as the person in charge of the energy in this channel, those comments are going to start getting deleted. Um, I am going to probably go put this video in as a reply in some of them. But then after that, I'm not even going to give a reason. I'm just going to delete comments like that because I don't want that energy um, causing... I don't want that energy to filtrate the people who, who find... Um, strength and encouragement at this channel because whatever we put out there uh, we get back right so I feel like and whatever we allow in it would be like me just letting anybody walk through my front door and and throw up any kind of nastiness in my space that I don't want to hear because I don't want that energy so it's the same thing it's like whenever you come into this place and yes it's a public place I understand that but it, if you not and most of you aren't even doing this but I'm just letting you know if you see some mean comments and then next thing you know they're gone it's because I've deleted them because whenever we allow somebody to come into our space and throw up all kinds of ugliness like that about other people it's not good for us it's not good for us I whenever I read those things it makes my energy I say it, it, it makes me feel sad and, and it makes me feel um, like the, like it makes me feel a little aggravated because I'm like, OK, if you're on if you're in this kind of community, you should already know <laughs> you should already know that that kind of talk is not beneficial for you. Um, and most of you guys that are listening to this aren't that person. I'm just. I'm, I'm a little frustrated about that. So for a while, I kind of went back and forth about what what do I actually do about it? And, I, and when, whenever I was asking God about it, he talked about boundaries. And he said, this is, this is important. It would be like, like I said, it'd be like me allowing somebody. It would be like when my dad was coming into my house and badgering me about forgiveness and he and I would argue and the kids were around and my husband finally said, nope, that's enough. It's, it's the same thing. I feel like it's my um, responsibility as the owner of the channel to keep the space clean. Now, let me say this. You got an issue about the message? I wrote, a, I did a message. I don't remember which sign it was, but somebody said, I call BS. Okay, I'm good with that. You know, if it doesn't work for you, you call BS on it all day long. I'm good with that. You can talk about me or the message all you want. <coughs> but when you start talking about other people and calling them names and calling them and saying things, um, if I feel hate and resentment and revenge in any message, I will delete it. Let me just say that because I will not allow hate or resentment or revenge or unforgiveness into my space. It's not, it's not, I, I love myself more than that. And I love you guys more than that. So we're going to get a PS. I hope that was, I hope that was beneficial. That, that last part, it, it I hadn't planned on putting it in there, but I, I I decided I needed to put it in there so that I can also put it as a as a response on those uh, messages that I'm fixing to delete after the response is there. Okay, God guides, angels, archangels, Holy Spirit. I thank you so much for the beautiful people that you send to this community, and I thank you for uh, helping us to understand that. To love ourselves means sometimes we're going to set a boundary. And even if that boundary is just an energetic boundary, we're going to set that boundary. Please show us the PS. If there's anything else I could have said differently, better, or just anything extra that I didn't say.
I thank you for love, light, and prosperity. I thank you for clarification, confirmation, and validation. And I thank you for um, clear and concise messages. What is the PS that goes with this message, please? And tomorrow we're going to start the fun readings, by the way. Um, so we'll see what we'll see what comes up. Okay, so look, she's holding that pentacle. And that's how I feel about you guys and about this channel. I cherish y'all. I really do. And I'm so grateful for y'all. And I really, I really feel like it's my responsibility to keep our space clean. And if it means deleting um, angry posts about people that, that aren't even, you know, I'm going to do it because I cherish you guys. I love you guys. I want to keep your space clean. I want to do my best, do whatever is my part in, in keeping your space clean so that it'll be a, a place that you can come and uh, and be fed by the messages that Spirit gives us. So this lover's card is is kind of like uh you know we talk a lot about self that God God or spirit wants us to love ourselves and meet ourselves loving ourselves and this is basically what that is for me and I feel like that's what he's encouraging us all to do you know with boundaries whether it's me with this channel or you in your life with somebody that you've been allowing to come in and regurgitate their energy into your space Love yourself enough to protect your own space and your own energy the way that we would one of our children, right? Or or a pet or whatever. It's about loving ourselves that 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 we can we there are some people we can love them from a distance. We don't have to let them come into our space and throw up their junk in our life. It's not um it's not required. To be, it's not a requirement of being able to say, I love my neighbors. I love, I love God with all my heart and I love my neighbors as myself. It's not required that I allow them in my house or in our space to throw up their yuck in my life and uh, to prove that, 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 to prove that love. Just like it wasn't my a requirement for me to uh, to formally out of my mouth say a prayer for the guy that molested my daughter. God, that's why he laughed at me because he knew my heart. He knew I had already settled that with him in my heart. I hadn't done a formal prayer, no. So when she said, "Have you prayed for him?" I no, I haven't. You know, I've been talking to God nonstop, but. So when I said that that night and I heard God laugh, I understood he was laughing at me because I was allowing somebody else to tell me the requirements based on what they think. But God already knew my heart. So love ourselves enough to listen to our hearts and to protect ourselves from other people's junk. And the death card. I feel like this is this is a true uh, transformation for some of us who who have laid you know we've laid down so many times for other people because if they say well you're being selfish or you don't you're not very compassionate or whatever it's like that's a trigger and we automatically think okay well we got to go lay down our life we got to go. Uh, we got to go sit there and listen to them say the same thing over and over and over and over again about how they hate this person or that person wronged them or blah, 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 blah. You know, as a friend, yeah, we might want to listen to it once. So let them get it off their chest. Maybe. I don't even know if that's a requirement. But to listen to the same thing over and over again every time they open their mouth, no. And that's going to be a huge transformation for some of you. And let me tell you something. Energy is so important whenever I feel like this card is showing up because I feel like God's saying whenever you love yourself enough and cherish yourself enough to set boundaries in your life and and not allow that kind of stuff 
you're if you're going to feel like you've been reborn you're going to feel like this is definitely a cycle that you've ended and that you're going to walk into a whole new way of understanding things because you're going to feel freed you're going to feel freed we're going to feel freed to live in our space and understand that it's that that it's I wish I could, I wish I could, well, I wish the words would come out of my mouth. It's like the, the burden that gets lifted off of us because the energy from other people can literally weigh us down and we don't even realize it. So whenever we remove that energy from us, it's like we're suddenly lighter. We're suddenly a new person. We suddenly can show up in a whole different way. And those old ideas about what, what, it's supposed what we're supposed to do what the requirements are to be a loving person or to be a compassionate person or not necessarily what society might think or family members or close friends might think that that means okay i love you guys i hope i'm i hope i delivered that okay i love y'all so much have a super duper day we'll start the readings tomorrow oh and check out uh in the in the description below, I opened a little Teespring store uh, with some uh, sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts, leggings, and stuff like that. Uh, go check it out. See if you like anything. Love y'all. Bye.